This is a video of Kid Cudi getting hit with a water bottle on stage while headlining one of the biggest music festivals of the year. Unsurprisingly, his reaction went like this. If I get hit with one more fucking thing, if I see one more fucking thing on this fucking stage, I'm leaving. Then this person in the crowd threw the second water bottle and bragged about how he was the one who made Cuddy walk off stage. Most people look at this and think, why would you pay for a concert just to disrespect the performer? Now to be fair, this is a music festival where hundreds of artists are performing, so maybe they didn't go to see Cuddy. But more importantly, the headliner was supposed to be Kanye West, who canceled his performance one week earlier and Rolling Loud had to quickly replace him. Now this doesn't justify the Cuddy disrespect, but it allows us to understand why it happened. Because Kanye West and Kid Cuddy's relationship throughout the years has seen massive ups and downs, which often results in Ye's fans attacking Cuddy. But it's gotten out of control recently, to the point where Cuddy is considering retiring from music. You know, the Kid Cuddy stuff, I, um, you know, I, I think I, I kind of want to put it on the back burner and, and kind of chill out with that. Yep. You know, I think I, I, I kind of want to be done with it, you know? Allow me to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a high quality game with hundreds of unique champions for your mobile or PC. Explore the millions of champion combinations as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena battles. Raid just celebrated their third anniversary and they have some really exciting updates. The Doom Tower introduces some terrifying bosses to slay. With over 120 levels, the Doom Tower has brought new challenges for players. They have also added a whole new faction that was introduced last year, the Shadowkin. They are a tribe of warriors from the Far East, recently liberated from the reign of evil. They have to be one of the coolest looking factions in the game. There's so much going on in Raid right now. Redeem the code DK Rises for a bunch of free goodies. Right now, Raid is running a trick or treat promotion for Halloween, where players can win real life prizes like $1,000 Amazon gift cards and some of the best Halloween champions in the game. It's all free. All you need is your Raid player ID. Just download Raid with my link in the description, then head to trickortreat.playerium.com. Enter your details, then spin the wheel and get your prize. The event is running right now until November 5th. It's a great time to start playing. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost $30. You can get a free champion, Tayrell, and all this in-game loot. You will find these rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thanks, Raid. This beef is frustrating because Kid Cudi is a major reason why Kanye fans love Kanye so much. In 2008, Ye heard the iconic single Day and Night off the debut mixtape A Kid Named Cudi. He immediately realized the potential and reached out to Cudi to sign him to Ye's good music record label. Then Cuddy immediately got to work on 808s and Heartbreak. I would have like Cuddy or Stero or Tony Williams or something just um, kind of vibe out and help me think of a line. Let's replace this line. Let's make this better. Like I Cuddy secured four writing credits on 808s and Heartbreak, one of those being Heartless, which is one of Kanye's best selling singles of all time. Not only that, but 808s and Heartbreaks is considered to be one of the most influential albums defining the melodic rap sound that has dominated for the past decade. Who knows what that album would have sounded like if Kid Cudi didn't work on it. The two would go on to work together for many years, singles, albums, and various creative projects. But it was in 2016 where the public got to see the ugly side of this relationship. Cudi tweeted, Everyone thinks they're so great, talking top five and be having 30 people write songs for them. My tweets only apply to who they apply. Ye, Drake, whoever. These dudes don't give a fuck about me. This tweet led to Kanye responding at his next show. But this wasn't the first time Cuddy did something like this. Two years earlier, he went after another artist for such an insignificant reason. I told my fans like, yo, if you want a Lupe verse, I'll write it for you for 500. It'll be yours. You can't put it on Twitter. It's yours. Like, don't leak the shit or do whatever, you know, it's yours. And Cuddy went on Twitter and was like, yo, Lupe, what you gonna do with that money? I'm like, nigga, it's $500. What are you talking about? It made people wonder why Cuddy just randomly jumped in someone else's business and essentially accused Lupe of scamming his fans. So when Cuddy tweeted about Kanye, fans didn't know if he was just being petty or if something genuinely wrong was happening behind the scenes. Just a few weeks later, it would all make sense when he opened up about the dark reality of his life in this Facebook post. Yesterday, I checked myself into rehab for depression and self-delete urges. I am not at peace. I haven't been since you've known me. If I didn't come here, I would have done something to myself. 
I simply am a damaged human swimming in a pool of emotions every day of my life. I can't make new friends because of it. I don't trust anyone because of it. And I'm tired of being held back in my life. I deserve to have peace. I deserve to be happy and smiling. I'm scared. I'm sad. I feel like I let a lot of people down. And again, I'm sorry. It's time I fix me. I'm nervous, but I'ma get through this. Love and light to everyone who has love for me, and I'm sorry if I let anyone down. I really am sorry. I'll be back, stronger, better, reborn. I feel like shit. I feel so ashamed. I'm sorry. He was always known for being in touch with his emotions and expressing them freely in his music, but there was something so eye-opening and honest about seeing a famous artist admit to seeking medical help for their mental health. Kanye and Cudi reunited on a seven-track album as an official duo, Kid See Ghosts. Their self-titled album was received very well by fans and critics. The two appeared to be best friends again, bonding over music and their mental health struggles. Ever since this project, fans have been desperate for even a mention of a new Kid See Ghost collaboration. When Kanye was rolling out his 2021 album Donda, he sold out the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Atlanta to do a live listening party. He previewed 18 songs, stacked with features such as Playboy Cardi, Travis Scott, Lil Baby, Jay-Z, and what felt like every rapper in the game. But no Cudi. Fans were confused. How could you have this insane feature lineup and no Kid Cudi? Their confusion would be resolved at the second listening event in Atlanta when new vocals from Kid Cudi appeared on the track Moon. But the excitement was short-lived because Cudi's verse was nowhere to be heard at the third and final listening event in Chicago. Nobody understood why there were so many inconsistencies with features. When Donda finally released, Kid Cudi's verse was officially on the track Moon. However, this will be the last Kid Cudi feature we will ever hear on a Kanye album. Back in February of 2022, Kanye was battling his divorce with Kim Kardashian publicly while trying to roll out Donda 2. Kanye would post this during an Instagram rant. Just so everyone knows, Cudi will not be on Donda 2 because he's friends with you know who. That friend would be Pete Davidson, who quickly became Kanye West's number one enemy after he began dating his ex-wife following their split. Pete Davidson and Kid Cudi have been good friends ever since Pete started on SNL in 2014, with Pete even crediting Cudi for saving his life. Why do you like Kid Cudi so much? You, you saved my life. I would I didn't have Kid Cudi. That, there's me, wow. any, if you're 25 and under, I, I truly believe that Kid Cudi saved your life. Kanye was not happy with Kid Cudi being friends with his rival. However, Cudi didn't seem to care too much. And he then commented on the post. Too bad I don't want to be on your album, you fucking dinosaur. Everyone knows I've been the best thing about your album since I met you. I'ma pray for you, brother. Followed by this tweet. We talked weeks ago about this. You're whack for flipping the script and posting this lie. Just for a look on the internet. You ain't no friend. Bye. The two continued going back and forth on social media. Kanye posted this meme of him versus Pete and Cuddy as the Avengers. Cuddy tweeted again. God opens the door so the wrong people can exit your life. Followed by another now deleted Kanye Instagram post of him and Cuddy with Pete's face crossed out. I just wanted my friend to have my back. The knife just goes in deeper. Yay fans jumped on the Cuddy hate train. Pete Davidson and anyone who associated with him was now their enemy. Kanye took it too far, threatening Pete constantly. Even people who respect Ye started to realize he was doing too much. Cuddy didn't appreciate the way Kanye was acting towards Pete, and Cuddy was officially done with Kanye. Hey, so I know some of you heard about the song I got with Pusha. I did this song when I was cool with Kanye. I am not cool with that man. He is not my friend, and I only cleared the song for Pusha because that's my guy. This is the last song you will hear me on with Kanye. But this beef was not over in the eyes of Kanye fans. Cuddy was officially their enemy. And when he replaced Kanye as the headliner at Rolling Loud, they took their anger out on him. To make matters worse, Kanye did actually show up to Rolling Loud, on a different stage, just a few hundred feet away. He came out as a special guest during Lil Durk's set, and proceeded to play Father Stretch My Hands Part 1, which also features Cuddy. The festival responded with this statement, Rolling Loud is a family. Our friends, the artists, and everyone involved needs to look out for each other, share the love, and be respectful to everyone. We love you, Cuddy. This whole situation fired people up online. It became a trend to hate Kid Cudi. They started bullying him for his previous fashion statements and unleashing their anger because of their parasocial allegiance to Kanye. And once this tweet was put out, it gave Ye fans all the justification to continue this behavior. Kanye West's longtime engineer, co-producer, and good friend, Mike Dean, was removed from Cudi's Moon Landing Festival lineup. Mike Dean claimed that he was canceled out of jealousy because he was touring with The Weeknd, but I'm assuming Mike's close relationship with Kanye may have also had something to do with it. Cuddy tweeted, 
People hate on me so hard, but I'm selling out arenas on my 14th year doing this shit. There's just too much love out there for me outweighing the negative, and it's a beautiful thing. God keeps me focused on the light I'm swimming in. Remember y'all, don't trip, keep flying. This was obviously a subtweet towards Mike Dean, and he referenced his own song, Swim in the Light, which is a track that Mike Dean produced. People took Mike's side. They thought Cuddy was just jealous. Ultimately, we don't really know the source of this beef, but Mid Cuddy became his new nickname for toxic yay fans. And somehow, it got even worse. Prior to the release of his eighth studio album, Enter Galactic in September, the album would leak online two weeks early. But when fans went to press play on these leaks, they were greeted with an unexpected surprise. Such an angel in your halo. There were legitimately fart noises all throughout the leaked songs. Fans immediately pointed to Mike Dean. Since Mike has worked on several Kid Cudi albums in the past, he may have had access to the files. Fans speculated that he leaked the album and added fart sounds as a way to get back at Cudi for canceling him at his festival. Despite Mike Dean never actually confirming or denying these rumors, he did respond to one tweet that alluded to him being responsible for the leak, lol. Enter Galactic would only sell 22,000 units in its first week, which is a big step down from Man on the Moon 3's 148,000 first week sales in 2020, which all culminated to saying this in his most recent interview. I just don't know if I wanna, if I wanna do, uh, if I wanna just do music, drop albums for too much longer, you know? I'm kind of nearing the end on, on all things Kid Cudi, I think. Now at age 38, he seems to be ready to move on from his music career citing his desire to write and act in more TV shows and movies, with his new Netflix special Enter Galactic being a step in that direction, as well as him directing his first feature film this year, Teddy. Cuddy has given more to the modern hip-hop sound than people realize. If music fans won't appreciate him or respect his legacy, then he should do what's best for him and move forward. Much love to Kid Cuddy.